गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल ओके सो इन टूडेज क्लास अगेन वी आर गोइंग टू सी अबाउट अनदर वन अलगोरदम बट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द प्रीवियस अलगोरदम विच वी हैव सीन एंड अपकमिंग अलगोरदम्स आर इन प्रीवियस अलगोरदम्स वी यूज द सुपरवाइज्ड लर्निंग मेथड right so when i say a supervised learning we will be having some labeled data so both input as well as the output will be given in the data set itself so we will segregate those data separately like x and y then we will train our model with those data input and output data and we will try to find a value for new data which we have passed okay training testing everything we will do right whereas when it comes to the unsupervised learning it is completely an non labeled data right we can say unlabeled data which means we will not specify uh, this is going to be the output uh, or this is going to be the classification like that we will not have any output variable only through the input values it has to find the pattern and it has to segregate the data in different clusters so here cluster i mean is groups okay so to make you to understand uh, um i can give you an example assume that two child is there okay uh, for first child what we are doing is um, we are giving training okay how we are giving training is uh, we are showing 1000 apple okay uh, thousand apple we are showing to the um, child and saying this is the apple this is how it will look sir like that we are training and another one fruit like banana okay and banana also like thousand banana different different banana size shape color everything we are showing to the particular child and then after completing the training part we are giving 1001 new completely new fruit okay it can be apple or banana so new image or new apple or banana we are showing means it has to classify okay whether this comes under banana class or the apple class okay this type of training we can call it as supervised learning right whereas second child is there okay to the second child we are not giving any training we are not saying this is apple and this is banana no any differentiation we are uh, uh, saying to the child simply we are giving the mixed fruits which contain both apple and banana and we are giving two empty basket okay and what we expect is it has to segregate apple and then uh, banana separately in both the basket okay so now also it will segregate into two okay based on the uh, what are the criteria it will check for in an apple and uh, banana so obviously shape is not going to match uh, color also is going to be different uh, so various parameters is there right uh, you know size shape i am not sharing anything uh, i am not noted i am just giving you ex example only okay uh, so based on the size shape uh, color so based on all this parameter uh, it will try to segregate into two offset even uh, if you also take means if some values you are giving uh, we will try to split it into different categories right uh, so these type of example we can say it for an unsupervised learning okay uh, for assumption uh, in the same basket uh, for the second child okay uh, we are not given any label uh, in the basket okay which contain all the fruits uh, uh, along with the apple and uh, banana we are having another one fruit called orange okay by mistake one or two orange also uh, kept in that particular basket so can anyone say whether the uh, child will classify it as an apple category or an banana category
in which basket it will actually put that orange fruit obviously it is going to put uh, those orange fruit also in the apple basket why because uh, maybe uh, size will be more or less matching with the apple mm. shape will be more or less matching with the apple when compared to the banana right so it will put it in the apple whereas if you are having a cucumber inside the basket then obviously the shape of uh, banana and cucumber is going to be same color also we are having green and banana also is there right and then uh, cucumber is going to be green color so it can be classified as an banana uh, type but it doesn't know the name okay what fruit it is it doesn't know so that you cannot uh, go and ask uh, for a new value like new fruit if you are showing means it can only segregate whether this comes under cluster 1 or cluster 2 or group 1 or group 2 so like that only it can able to classify so the term which we use for grouping the uh, data points is known as clustering okay so clustering is a task hope my uh, ppt is visible so it is a task of grouping the data points into a set of object okay so here if you see means all the data points will be plotted in our graph and then based on the closest value just a minute it will segregate into different category okay then the data points that are of the same group should be exist similar feature so in my example similar feature in the sense uh, it will consider orange and uh, apple as same category possibility is there uh, if you are taking pen marker okay all are going to be looking same size uh, color and all is going to be matching right so that can be grouped into single category so here also if you see means uh, we can easily by seeing uh, with the, assume that you don't have any circle only dots is there that time itself we can able to segregate right uh, we can say the data can be splitted into three halves so likewise whichever points coming under uh, this category will be taken as one cluster like i can say cluster one so cluster two and then cluster three like a like that i can able to split the data but it can only say cluster one two and three but it doesn't know whether this means uh, apple or uh, any other fruit type or anything okay in case uh, instead of the example which we are seeing i told we are having only two basket uh, in that one basket it is going to put all the apples and in another basket it is going to put all the bananas in case if i am having three basket then what it may it can do is uh, whichever is not completely matching the pattern okay uh, completely different fruit means like pineapple i have put it in the basket okay in my actual basket so it will try to create another one new group okay again everything is going to be an unlabeled group only so it will be a new group called uh, like group 3 like that it can able to assume and it will put the pineapple or even cucumber and orange i have told right so those are also not matching the pattern i mean exactly not matching right so that can also be segregated uh, segregated into a separate group also okay like uh, we will use to see about outliers right in supervised learning what we will say it as outlier which is not matching in our pattern whichever points is far away from the actual pattern we call it as outliers right so like that we can uh, simply ignore that group also okay if it is not matching the pattern of the existing group okay then it comes under the unsupervised learning only input will be passed no any output will be passed to our data set for training 
okay and the common uh, technique for this is statistical data analytics used in many fields okay this type of uh, process is uh, used in many statistical analytical uh, data types okay So here also I am having one example okay uh, to understand the cluster uh, what are the different ways we can able to create a cluster so I am having a data set in this data set I am having student ID gender major and then grade is there okay and if you see in the right hand side I have created three groups okay and in this three group I have given the ID of the students so just by seeing the IDs can you able to say um, on what basis I have created this group here I have given a student ID as 1 2 4 5 10 7 8 then 3 6 9 can anyone say like on what basis I have created this three cluster here itself answer is given also cluster of major so major is nothing but the subject okay based on the subject we have split it into three cluster or three groups we have created so this group one represent what one two four five ten students have taken max as their major okay so based on the max major we have created the group one so in group 2 3 6 and 9 so 3 6 and 9 have taken the statistics as their major okay and remaining two persons have taken physics as their major okay then what are all the other so this is one possibility okay based on major I have created if I want to create a cluster means I can able to create three cluster what if uh, I want to create different types of cluster so what are all the other ways I can create a cluster based on the grade okay correct correct so based on the grade if I am creating cluster means how many cluster I can able to create I can able to create four clusters right how because we are having a plus a is there similarly b and b plus is there okay so whoever has got a grade I can create as one cluster whoever has got a plus another cluster B as third cluster and B plus as fourth cluster. So likewise, similarly, not only for grade, we can do it for gender also. Right? If I segregate or specify based on the gender means, I can able to create two clusters. Okay. So one is going to be uh, male category and another is going to be female category. Okay. As a user, we know this is segregated based on male and female, but uh, for our algorithm, it cannot be able to specify. Okay, this cluster means male, this cluster means female, like that. Uh, the algorithm cannot say because it is unlabeled. We know where we have mentioned that uh, uh, this is some category, uh, category uh, one, category two, like that. We have not specified anywhere. Okay, all these are going to be my input only okay maybe I can ignore the student ID as an input remaining things I can give it for clustering purpose because I cannot uh, create a group or a cluster based on the student ID right then so as you all told based on the grade if I want to split means I can split it into four different category okay so here we see means 137 uh, 137 has got a plus grade then uh, 5 and 6 got b grade 
then uh, 2 4 and 8 uh, got a grade and then we are having b plus right uh, so why i am showing you like uh, so first example they have created three cluster in the second example we have created two cluster and this particular example we have created flow four different cluster so based on the user okay we can specify how much cluster you want to create okay based on that the feature also is going to be change okay if i say only two cluster i want to split means it is easy to split based on the gender so if i'm asking for three cluster means based on the major we can able to split and if i ask for four cluster means i can split based on the grade so likewise when the number of feature increases and inside each feature if you are having various category means accordingly we can able to create multiple clusters okay okay where and all this type of uh, clustering algorithms are actually used in the real world or real time example if you ask means recommendation engines okay recommendation engine they will be using market segmentation so market segmentation means uh, uh, who and all buying this type of product uh, putting in one category okay another type of uh, product or brand they are purchasing means we can market accordingly like for those type of people uh, we will be giving some uh, similar advertisement okay different category of people will get different uh, advertisement okay then social network analysis so based on your interest okay if you are putting like you like cooking someone else with the same interest can be showed you as an uh, suggestion friends uh, okay friends of friends like that social network analysis also we can able to make uh, which cluster is better more segmented or segment with more values it's depend upon how you want the output so if you are asking question like which cluster is better uh, the more you are trying to split the uh, cluster the more it will get uh, uh, it will reduce its accuracy okay um, whereas if we are having some average cluster range so the splitting also will be of some uh, best optimization we can able to say so that also we will see okay how to find the best uh, fit for our cluster how many cluster we have to split okay values it is obviously it is going to change if you are taking a data set with thousand values means i'm going to get different output uh, if you are taking a data set with only 100 or 50 data means the values are going to vary but clustering it can be common right uh, in the previous example also i have showed you only 10 uh, i think only 10 data will be there from the different splitting means values are going to be less only in this case right uh, in the same example if i showed you 100 or 1000 data means obviously four cluster or to, if you are going for two cluster means what will happen you will be having so many values okay right uh, male 500 may be there and female another 500 may be there whereas if i am going for the grade method means it will be obviously reduced because uh, not uh, if a plus is the highest grade means only few set of people will get a plus grade right uh, and uh, some other average students will be getting a and b grades uh, and some below average student they will be getting okay i think a and a, b plus may be higher grade okay uh, we don't know right so accordingly it will vary so it is not based on the value or it is not based on the cluster if i am trying to make it as five so i have told two so we had a option to split it into two right so we have taken uh, gender if i am saying three means again we had an option that based on the major we can able to split when i say four we had another one option to split it based on the grade what if i say five six like that if i'm saying means what will happen so it will be difficult for us to split right so always we have to go for some optimized or best fit like how we will do for k n n we will check for the k value right similarly here also we have to check for the best cluster value okay
then in medical field we can use image segmentation okay uh, like dog image cat image and all is there means it will try to split it into uh, different category okay this type of uh, images is there some feature is there okay uh, here is very big means it should be a dog very small size color is different so then it should be a cat like that image seg segmentation we can able to do anomaly detection so i have told right whichever is not matching the pattern automatically it will become an outlier or an anomaly right so that alone we can uh, create one separate cluster and we can completely remove those values present inside the cluster okay so how clustering actually works okay uh, so basic steps if you want to know uh, before going to the how clustering actually works we use an algorithm called k means algorithm okay in the k means algorithm only we will be using this type of clustering method okay so like how we have seen knn knn is completely supervised learning okay here k is not a fixed value right it is a varying value similarly here also k represent the number of clusters so number of clusters you want to create so as a first step what we will do is we will find the number of cluster or the number of um, k value what is should be the k value so finding the k value okay so once we have found the k value okay i will explain this step and then i will show you the diagram so that you can able to understand even more better so we have got k value right from the graph okay if this is the graph means k value means i'm for assumption i'm taking three points okay then inside the graph i will create three random points okay i will place three random points and so as a second step selecting k number of random points k random points so these points are called as centroids okay so keeping this as a center whichever points are near to this particular center so i will try to create one cluster accordingly okay so this point will be the center point and from this point whichever point are very closest to it okay uh, what uh, distance algorithm we will use in knn what are all the distance algorithm because in knn we use various distance algorithm right uh, anyone remember those algorithms hmm equilibrium distance manhattan distance uh, and uh, Ham hamington distance mm, so many distance uh, we have seen right uh, here in this k means algorithm it will use the euclidean distance method okay so based on the euclidean distance method it will try to um, join all the nearest point okay and it will try to check for the uh, similar features whether it is having similar feature or not okay it doesn't means it will not stop at this step itself okay so as a third step as i told it will try to find the closest to points so find the closest to points and it will try to form and forms clusters suppose uh, if it is not having the able to reach all the points near to it okay because randomly it is placing right this random points uh, doesn't need to be the input point which you have given okay it can be a completely new point also okay so what it will do is it will try to iterate so iterate in the sense it will find the variance for each the of the point that has been uh, 
closest to it okay so i am taking this as point 1 point 2 and point 3 okay so from this point 1 nearby five points are there okay so it will try to find the variance for all this point if it is not up to the point like we are not getting a best fit means it will try to move the point from one position to another position okay similarly all points will be moving from one position to the another position to match the variance okay to get the accurate uh, or the best match until it it will try to iterate over our uh, data set okay so once it has been finalized okay this is the best match means it will stop the iteration and our model will be ready okay so once the iteration has been completed so if iteration completed so it will create a new cluster with all the closest points okay so now we can say the model is ready okay so let us see okay here in this example if you have seen means the black dot which you are seeing right uh, so these black dots are nothing but the what uh, centroids so keeping this as a middle point so it is trying to connect all the nearest two points present okay so from there we can able to say this has been created as one cluster and this is another one cluster third cluster and then fourth cluster so four cluster if you have creating means it will create like this in case if you are given only three means what will happen maybe this two cluster will be joined into one cluster possibility is there when compared to other cluster these are little bit closer to each other right so like this it will be creating various clusters so first these models work on the notation that similarity is the derived from the closest of the data point to the centroid of the cluster so as i told from the centroid it will try to reach all the closest point possible then the points will be divided into different cluster based on the closest to the centroid so one of the most famous algorithm so uh, the centroid based algorithm the another name for k means algorithm is centroid based algorithm so we use this k means algorithm method okay in the unsupervised learning or the clustering method okay in clustering itself various types are there okay we are seeing one among this type only okay this type uses euclidean distance method okay so from one point the center point it will try to find the distance of all other points whereas different uh, clustering method uses different method okay um, and different algorithm also we will use okay same algorithm we will not use for different uh, clustering methods okay okay so i have told you right uh, so as a first step what it will do is it will randomly uh, point plot three points in our data set okay so keeping that as the centroid it will try to uh, divide the points into three okay here i have taken three uh, what are three points so three cluster it will try to create in the first iteration okay so in the first iteration if you have seen means uh, half of the portion is like uh, blue color has been taken only few given for uh, orange color and the remaining has been taken by the green color right so when we check for the variance of each point so this points and all these points and all very far from the centroid which is blue color right so what will happen it will slightly start moving 
okay all the points will start moving so in this second indentation if you have seen means see previously the uh, blue color was here right so slightly it has been moved in one direction then orange also previously i assume okay it was in this position right it was in the top of here so it also moved similarly green color also moved from its original position right now if you have seen means some of the points are moved from blue to green and then some are moved from green to orange so likewise it will start moving its point okay second iteration third iteration like that how many iteration it is possible it will try to move until it reaches a point where it has been properly divided so here if you see means we can say it is a best splitted cluster right it has been splitted very uh, accurately so this part we can say it has one cluster second cluster and then third cluster right so this also we don't need to specify like how many iteration you have to take that we will not specify but we can uh, control the number of clusters okay you can say i want only two cluster or five cluster that is totally up to us so depend upon the class number of clusters it will try to uh, uh, search for more similarities okay so, so if i have given three so it is splitted very easily if i am giving four or five means maybe uh, it will try to split this into one half okay this will be in another half likewise it will try to find for similarities okay so what are all the things it is going to consider so similar categories i mean uh, categories it has to check and propagate number of observations so how many observation it has been taken from the centroid okay so these two things it has to be considered while creating the uh, cluster so from that it is clear that we cannot give less points to uh, blue and orange and more points to green color okay here we are having three colors assume that for one class alone we cannot give more points and the remaining class we cannot give less points okay it should have some uh, common points okay we cannot equally divide into three that is not possible right uh, we cannot say in a data set we will have equal number of uh, you know all category okay some category values will be high when compared to some category values right uh, in case of student uh, um, data set if you have seen means uh, failure students also will be there right when compared to the past students failure student count will be very less only right so that we cannot say uh, it should be equal so how many of them are passing that many failures should be there like that we cannot come to a conclusion okay so this is what we will call it as a good cluster analysis so it should have some shared similar categories then how i will decide uh, with how many number of cluster i can give okay so that i will get some uh, best cluster or best uh, uh, centroid so here we will be using one method called elbow method okay so in this elbow method so it uses to determine the optimum cluster in our data set okay optimum cluster means maximum this much only you have to split okay then only it, it will give you some good result so that we will find using this elbow method okay so as i again mentioned it will find the optimum number of cluster in our data set okay so we will see the diagram so sim similar like k n n algorithm we will try to plot okay we will put x axis as number of cluster and we will find one uh, inertia so how much inertia it is having so it will start dropping so if you have checked for the one cluster the inertia will be very high always so slowly when the number of clusters started increasing the inertia will start de decreasing okay so we should not go for very uh, least inertia value at the same time it should not be having very less cluster also so both should be uh, like an average 
so here if you see means from the first point to second point there's a huge drop is there similarly from second point to third point another one huge drop is there from third to fourth if you see means and fourth to fifth if you see this three point means you can able to see that it is looking like an elbow right human elbow it is like looking right so that is why we call this particular uh, method as an elbow method so from this we can go for the cluster like five uh, in this case we can say five right uh, or two it is starting from two if i say means three four the so five splitting is possible in the data set so like that we are getting on example output okay so inertia also is not very less at the same time cluster also not more okay so accordingly we have to choose it's up to us only uh, if you want to give four and check means you can give four five and six okay nearest value you can give and check whether which is giving the highest accuracy okay so mostly this particular point or the point which is next to the point will be giving some uh, closest accurate value or more accurate value it can able to give okay clear for you all so what are all the things we have seen in the k means clustering so this clustering uh, k means clustering algorithm is also known as centroid based algorithm then so it will take an internal cluster data points as a sim similar as possible and then it will create a different clusters as possible then the data points to the cluster such as sum of square distance so this we will see based on the sum of square distance only it will try to find the uh, centroid minimum cluster okay from one point to the another point uh, it is checking right uh, the euclidean distance we have seen so based on this uh, sum of square distance only it will take so and then finally it will try to segregate into a homogeneous type of value okay each cluster will have a in um, will have a unique set of values okay so let us see the mind map and we can directly move to the programming part so up to here it is clear right so we have seen about clustering how clustering works in our data set okay internally okay so in the using the k means algorithm uh, we are going to pass the customer income and then the spent okay uh, based on that it is going to segregate into different cluster okay so first step is finding the problem the problem is to group categorizing the information based on the amount spent okay In the collection data set what we will have is we will have two columns in first column we will have the uh, income earned by a customer and then how much he has spent Let me show you the data set also. Hope my data set is also visible. So here you can able to easily see. So income one column is there and then spent another one column is there. Okay, this two column only we are going to pass it into our uh, algorithm. Then load and summarize the data set so simply this we all know right a uh, number of rows and columns you will find and uh, we use the pandas.read csv file to load the data into our uh, python program then get the uh, so these are all common then usually in supervised learning fourth step what we will do we will segregate the data set into x and y right uh, since we are not having any output here okay it is an unsupervised learning method we will only segregate the data and zip the data set using the numpy library so zipping means what is we are having two separate column and it is represented in the form of data frame right so we want to convert the data frame into a form of array okay so for that we will use np.array 
okay uh, if i come from the internal function means first we will combine both income and then spent so by using this zip method so if i use zip method means what will happen one income and then spent as a pair we will combine for all the values those pair will be converted into list okay then those list will be converted into the form of array okay so those array will be passed into my variable called x okay and then we are having the k means clustering algorithm so before k means this is how our uh, points will be look like once we have performed k means means it will uh, segregate into various clusters then so what is clustering everything we have just now seen in the ppt right same thing only it is given like it is a task for grouping the data points into a set of objects okay same type of uh, similar feature it will try to group it into one uh, separate group okay and it is an unsupervised learning okay so we can also say it is an iterative algorithm okay that divides the unlabeled data set into k different cluster in such a way that each data set belongs only one group that has similar properties okay so where and all we are using so that example also we have seen right recommendation market segmentation social networking okay anomaly detection everywhere we will use and how clustering works so that also we have seen just now okay so this is how the final output will be there okay so if you see these steps means so as a first step what it will do it will take a number of uh, clusters it will take and then it will try to plot it in our existing uh, points and then it will try to create one uh, median line okay which separate these two uh, category okay then based on the variance it will try to move its position and then again it, it will repeat the same process so this process will continue until it reaches the optimized position okay then finally it will divide it into two separate clusters okay then so we have to find the best k value so for finding the best k value as we have discussed we will be using the elbow method okay this is how the elbow will look like if we are plotting uh, we have seen right the sum of squares one word in the ppt so it is nothing but it uses the concept of wcss so wcss is nothing but within cluster sum of square okay based on that only you can able to get the inertia okay for each cluster values okay so inertia is nothing but the it is calculated by measuring the distance between the each data point and its centroid okay from the center it will try to measure all the data points and squaring it so it is squaring it distance and summing these squares across one cluster okay so the good model is one with low inertia so as i told it should have low inertia and at the same time it should have low number of clusters okay that is when we will say this is the best cluster we are having then we will fit the model to the optimized k value and we will try to visualize our clustered result okay so let us uh, directly go into the programming part is it clear for you all all these steps yes sir okay super
so clustering using the income spent okay we have seen the data set also income and uh, spent column was there so i'm going to import the data set so in the for this particular program we need numpy uh, library also because we are going to convert uh, the list to the array right so for that we need panda i'm sorry numpy also so pandas as pd then i'm importing numpy as np so if you want means here itself also we can give matplotlib anyways we are going to use so we can simply give matplotlib.pyplot okay then i'm importing the data set so the data set name is data set dot csv only so simply i can give data set is equal to data. okay then i'm just summarizing the data set simply we can see the shape okay um we just need to know how many rows and columns is there we know we are having two columns but just for checking how many rows i'm having so i'm going to give data set dot shape okay so totally we are having three not three rows and then two columns okay so here i'm going to segregate and then zip my data set okay so for that for zipping purpose what i need to do is I'm taking the two um, okay income is there right I'm creating a variable and I'm storing the values of the income column okay so if you have checked the uh, um, both income and spent is in the caps so I'm up to use the same capital okay so data set income dot values so only values will be passed to this particular variable similarly for this spent uh, column data set of spent dot values then what i have to do so we have seen in the mind map right first i have to convert into zip then zip has to be converted into list then that list will be converted into array okay so x is equal to np dot array so np dot array of list of zip of both this value like income comma spent okay so now if i go and check my x value okay we are not having any y value so if i check my x value means this is how it will be created so i have created a pair so hope you will understand so pair means feature one feature two you can say or x y you can say or income and spent we can say so now I have to find the best optimized k value right so for assumption i have uh, taken k value as 4 and i have given some meaning for that 4 also but we will see okay through this program we will see uh, create that graph and then we will see whether 4 will be enough or we can able to add more or not okay so for finding the best k value so i'm going to use uh, K means algorithm I have told and it is a clustering based algorithm I have told right so use this as a keyword so cluster is there K means is there so from sk learn dot cluster okay from the class cluster we are going to import the K means algorithm okay here K and M should be caps okay otherwise it will throw error then we have seen now uh, we have to plot it in graph right for that we need some value so this values is nothing but wc 
yes yes so within the cluster square sum of square value right so i'm creating one list so in this list i will store all these values for plotting purpose okay and i will iterate over for i in range so i will give 1 to 11 so which means it will check from 1 to 10 then okay sorry uh, i have to give colon so inside that i have to create a model by passing this k mean uh, algorithm right so simply i will create km okay k mean and then the algorithm name is k means so inside that we will be having various parameters right so that we all know so from that uh, the first parameter which i am going to use is n clusters so how many clusters i am going to have so in the n cluster i will pass the i value so each time when it iterates it will have different cluster value okay and uh, we can give the random state also okay we have not given any random state like we have not done any training splitting and all we have not done right so those steps and all not needed in the unsupervised learning so that is why program also has been stringed otherwise what we will do we will uh, segregate x and y then we will split the data into train to split uh, so many things we will do right feature scaling we will do so in this case we don't need to do any feature scaling why because both income and spent are in same unit only right so we are not doing any feature scaling also okay then okay random state as usual i am giving zero i have to fit this model so km dot fit the x value so entire data set i am passing as a training value to my algorithm then i have to pass the inertia right so to find the inertia in by inbuilt we are having one method so that method is nothing but uh, like k means the algo variable name dot inertia underscore okay simple uh, we are having this algorithm okay so if i give dot inertia underscore means it will automatically find the inertia and it will uh, store it into my wcss okay i have to give it as wcss okay each time for the different cluster value it will store accordingly then i have to plot it in my matplotlib right so plt dot plot then again i have to give the range same range 1 to 11 as my x axis and wc ss are going to be my y and then color simply i'm just giving color as uh, sorry uh, color as red any color you can give okay and marker okay i want to have some bigger marker means i'm going to give it as 10 so it should be in quotes then if i want to give some heading so this and all optional only i want to give some title means what title i will give uh, optimal k value then uh, x axis y axis i can specify so x label So in lex label it represent number of cluster so and in y label it means the wcss value or we can simply give it as inertia so both are fine so i'm just giving it as inertia then finally pld dot show okay so let us see uh, what type of graph we are getting sorry i have to check where i made the mistake um, 
अनरिकग्नाइज्ड मार्कर स्टाइल 10 then i will give it as the eight ah okay so it is working fine now see i have given uh, this is the inertia value okay and this is the number of cluster and here you can able to see a bend in the graph right from first point to the second point a huge drop is there from the second to third again one huge drop is there from the third to fourth and fourth to fifth you can if you are seeing means uh, you can able to see some constant drop only is there right uh, so from here i can take four okay four uh, cluster i can take if you want means you can go for uh, five or three also but four will be like decent value so inertia also uh, less at the same time cluster also very less okay and for our understanding okay fitting the k means to the data set with k equal to 4 i have given so for 4 split up i have given some uh, names also cluster 1 i can call it as what uh, cluster with medium income and low spent okay the income which is received by the uh, customer will be medium and he is also spending very low only and cluster 2 what i can say i can say yes getting high income and then uh, medium of i spent okay and for the third uh, cluster i can say customer with a very low income and for the fourth i can say a class uh, customer with a medium income but is spending very high so likewise we can uh, create various possibilities right uh, low income low spent uh, low income high spent low income medium spent uh, and then high income low spent high income medium spent and high income uh, high spent likewise uh, i can create six up to six six cluster also i can create but when i go the uh, number of cluster is getting higher means uh, the number of points also will start getting reduced and we may not get some uh, proper uh, cluster also so to avoid that i will uh, stop with this four okay I'm going to give cluster as 4 only. Okay, so now I'm going to create the model. Okay, with K means. So N cluster. So I'm giving it as 4 and then random state. I'm giving it as 0. Okay. So small mistake. N underscore cluster should come. Not N cluster. N underscore clusters. Okay. Then I have to take Y. Instead, here we will not say predict. Instead we will say like Y means. Okay. Because we are not predicting anything. We are just creating cluster. So model dot fit but here we will say fit underscore predictor okay in the previous uh, algorithm and all we will simply give model dot predict only right but here we are just giving different method called model dot fit underscore predict okay that is the difference so fit underscore predict the y x value okay So I have created. So this part also completed. Now I want to visualize my clusters, right? So points, if I want to visualize in the graph means. So this is how it is going to look like. So let us see. Uh, for this, I am going to use some scatter plot. Okay. So using this scatter plot, I will. Uh, Visualize the data set value. Just a minute. Uh, okay. So since I have created into four, so this is how I have to create my uh, graph. So plt dot scatter. Okay. From the x. Okay. 
so y mean value okay y mean value if i check means it will be as a uh, list i mean list of pairs we are having right so i'm going to compare x y means is equal to equal to 0 comma 0 so 0 comma 0 means it will come in one category so 0 comma 0 0 comma 1 similarly 1 comma 0 1 comma 1 you will have and then 2 comma 0 2 comma 1 we will have and then 3 comma 0 3 comma 1 we will have which is nothing but four clusters we are having right so it should be given like this so y means is equal to equal to 0 comma 0 comma this is going to be my x value means x of y means is equal to equal to 0 comma 1 okay so this is going to be my x and y value then a uh, few more uh, points also i can give like i, I can give a uh, color okay color in short i'm giving it as a uh, brown okay for different clusters i can give different coloring and simply label so label i will just give it as uh, cluster one so c1 uh, otherwise c1 sorry okay then same uh, goes for remaining things just the numbers alone it is going to change so two three four okay so zero zero one zero one one two zero two one then three zero three one so brown color i have given and then i can give blue color green color and then mm, what color okay yellow is there means i can give yellow yellow okay and label also i have to change to so cluster one cluster two cluster three cluster four okay then remaining under like common thing like plt dot title so what title we can give like income spent analysis we can give okay and in my uh, x label what i have to give uh, i can give it as income and in my y label i will give it as spent then i have to use the legend method okay so then only it will show each color means what so that it will show it to us and then finally i have to show my graph okay so from here you can able to see so cluster one has taken in the bottom part okay cluster one cluster two blue color it came under the right hand side so cluster three it is taken in the left hand side and cluster four it is almost like in the center of the part okay so income so less income uh, like 150 to 200 okay we can take uh, so they have we are having low spent also is there medium spent also is there and high spent category people also is there and 200 to 300 if i take means uh, 250 or uh, 200 to 300 i can take so medium spent people is there medium income and medium spent people also is there medium income high spent people also is there when i give go more than 300 means high income people whereas high spent also is there and uh, medium spent also we can say right so like this we can create various clusters okay four i have created uh, if you want means if you are giving three then what will happen the yellow and brown will be in one color okay and uh, mean remaining uh, green and blue will be a separate cluster right if i increase to five maybe there is a possibility that uh, some 
out layer parts and all taken as one cluster and remaining will be taken as different cluster also possible okay understood okay suppose if you want to see the centroid point also okay here which will is going to be my centroid where the centroid is present for this cluster that also if you want to see means okay in the same code what you can do is here you can give like plt dot scatter okay so here instead of getting from the x we will get it from the model so in the inside the model our model we have created right we will be having cluster centers cluster underscore centers underscore will be there okay for x axis we just have to take all the rows comma zero okay this is common okay so zero then for y again model dot cluster underscore centers here what i have to take all the rows comma one okay which is zero means x uh, one means y okay and uh, i can specify the marker as uh, okay marker i am giving it as yes so yes means square okay i will get a point in a square shape okay and then uh, i will label it as okay, i will put it in another line so i will give label as centroids okay and if i want to give some color so see if i want to give means uh, i didn't use any red color right uh, so i can give it as red okay so now again i'm running this code means see you can able to see the centroids also okay otherwise i can increase the size of my centroid uh, like or i can give different color so i think in brown it is getting merged right in yellow it is visible very clearly green also it is green and blue also clear maybe in the brown part it is not very much clear so you can give some different color also like for example if i'm giving cyan ah okay maybe this color is a little bit contrast to other colors so i think you can able to see the centroid point so keeping this as the centroid um our clusters has been created okay clear so is it clear for you all suppose if you are giving uh, more than 4 or less than 4 means in the graph also you have to do changes accordingly okay if you are giving 5 means then you have to give 4 comma 0 comma 1 and different color you can give and then label you can give it as c5 or anything okay so cluster code is going to be same only okay so try giving with the different uh, cluster values like give with 3 then 5 6 so if you are going more means how it is splitting okay that and all you can practice okay sorry so uh, try to complete the uh, registration process also whoever has not done because it will hardly take like 10 to 15 minutes only to complete all the process okay if you are having a uh, what to say your uh, passport size photo 
and then your signature and your left hand thumb impression means uh, it will hardly take 10 minutes okay all basic information only we are asking from you and all three images should be less than 50 kb okay so once you have completed only we will finally verify all this process and then we will further proceed from our side so by this weekend okay um, 10 or 11 only okay so up to 11 i am giving you time okay try to complete it don't uh, take it to the last moment okay so don't make me to call each and every one and uh, ask to do the registration you have to do only if you are doing in this month means then only you can able to apply for uh, the nsqf examination in upcoming months okay then only you can apply for you will be getting some registration number and other process and all is there then you can apply for the examination final nsqf examination so otherwise the process will get delayed and one time if you do this registration means the student registration it will be valid for up to five years okay within that five years suppose we have missed to write the nsqf examination in this attempt means you can write it in any other attempt within this five years okay so if you have no any queries means i will wind up the session for today so see you all in tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's class okay thank you all